hello everyone and thank you for joining in. It's my pleasure today to have this webinar on diffusion and permeability measurements by DVS. I'll start by comparing the technique with other characterization techniques and uh, describe the different types of absorption processes and then move to introduce the system before going over some applications and case studies on vapor diffusion and permeability measurements on thin films and packaging materials, organic and water vapor co-adsorption on thin films, uh, water diffusion through bitumen film, and uh, minerals affinity to bitumen by measuring surface energy and uh, adhesion properties. So for characterization techniques, generally we either use energy as a probe or heat as a probe, and these are for spectroscopic techniques uh, where we can get analytical and structural information, or uh, in the case of heat, like calorimetry and TGA, where we get thermodynamic information. Here, for the DVS, we use molecules as a probe. It is absorption technique, and from the by measuring the isotherms, we can get the thermodynamic, chemical, and structural information. The way molecules interact with solids, uh, they, are, they either are adsorbed onto the surface uh, or absorbed into the bulk of the material. The speed, they interact with the material, and the speed, they uh, come out of, the, they diffuse out of the material. All this gives us information about the material's behavior, and by studying the isotherms and the absorption mechanism, we can predict the material's behavior, the shelf life, the stability of the material, and uh, whether the material is porous, whether uh, uh, molecules condense, vapor molecules condense, or interact with the material, go into the bulk of the material, cause phase changes. All this information we can get from the uh, isotherms and the DVS data. Here's the schematic diagram of the system. Um, the, the incubator uh, accommodates the balance stand where there is a, a micro balance with an accuracy of 0.1 microgram uh, at the uh, top of the stand and then hanged on wires coming down through these channels uh, to the sample chamber here on the left and the reference side on the right. Uh, you don't have to open both chambers to put sample in and out and uh, uh, take the uh, pan out uh, and only the sample side can be opened and closed. So that basically saves you uh, time and um, effort opening both, both chambers. Um, video options, um, preheater can be attached to the bottom of this chamber and the um, Raman probe, UV probe, can be attached to the top of this chamber on the sample side as well. Uh, you'll see an exhaust line on the side of the incubator, which can be connected to a mass spec or any uh, or a GC in case you want to analyze any gases coming off uh, of your material. So basically, the system consists of a series of very accurate mass flow controllers for two uh, reservoirs uh, in the uh, one behind the behind the reference chamber, one behind the sample chamber there, and um, a sensor for the for the uh, moisture rotronic probe and for the organic vapor ultrasonic uh, sensor, or it can have two ultrasonic sensor in case you wanted to run two organic vapors. So what sort of information we get from the system? Uh, here is the uh, mass plot, the red line, uh, basically change of mass against time. This gives you about, uh, information about the kinetics, uh, how fast the sample is drying at 0% relative humidity, and how quickly it reaches equilibrium at different RH steps. Uh, and finally, uh, when it gets to the highest relative humidity and start coming up, coming down during the desorption steps, how different the desorption cycle is to the 
absorption cycle and whether at all it comes back to where it started from and um, uh, whether the process is reversible or irreversible and how much uh, uh, uptake there is whether uh, it's a sur just surface option or whether it goes into the bulk of the material and if we get the data at the end of each step and plot the mass against concentration against uh, relative humidity and uh, then you can plot the isotherms absorption desorption and the shape of the isotherm you can analyze the shape of the isotherms and I'll show you that we have in the analysis software different macros which allows you to apply different equations to the to the isotherms and analyze the isotherm and that way uh, um, get more information about the materials behavior and predict uh, uh, materials interactions as well. One of the important aspects of the system is the fact that it can generate the accurate, very accurate uh, concentrations and also when you ask for absolutely dry uh, gas, uh, that's what you get. Basically, if you're asking for 0% relative humidity, at the beginning of the uh, experiment, at the end of the experiment, that's exactly what you get. Because that's uh, if if you didn't, then uh, uh, the problem will be in some mat sensitive materials where they can scavenge the smallest amount of uh, moisture. And here is a case where this uh, pharmaceutical material during the uh, desorption, uh, the pink desorption curve doesn't come back to zero because there is still um, moisture in the line whereas with with our system the dvs system um, the blue line the desorption curve comes back to zero because the uh, the gas is absolutely dry and this is important because that could basically uh, gives the give the wrong information as if if the hysteresis gap here stays open and the desorption curve doesn't come back to zero that indicates the material is actually holding on to moisture whereas this is not true in fact if the gas was absolutely dry the uh, the gap would would close and uh, it's a reversible process So the shape of the isotherms, uh, there are different shapes um, and according to the uh, nature of the material and the degree of interactions of, between the probe molecules and the surface of the material, uh, different shapes of the isotherms would give you different information. For example, type one, typical of microporous materials where uh, very quickly uh, vapor molecules are absorbed and uh, they go to the micro micropores and then the isotherm comes to a plateau at uh, uh, very quickly type 2 type 4 isotherms uh, you will have monolayer formation where a monolayer of molecules interact with the surface of the material and then further layers build up on top of the monolayer and uh, as it can it can be seen in the type 2 type 4 isotherms and the typical capillary condensation uh, hysteresis gap is seen here as well. Type 3, type 5 isotherms, again typical of condensation or cluster formation where molecules actually interact with each other rather than interacting with the surface of the material. So this type of interaction is not ideal for uh, calculations like surface area. Uh, where you need monolayer interaction with the surface of the material in order to calculate the surface area. Different types of uh, macros and equations are available in the analysis software. The standard analysis software typically uh, allows you to uh, plot the data, the mass data, plot the isotherms, calibrate the system uh, through salt calibrations. Uh, and then more importantly the advanced macros allow you to do a series of uh, more advanced calculations like pi e spreading pressure uh, surface energy calculations surface area calculations heat absorption diffusion measurements and activation energy of diffusion 
basically the same experiment at different temperatures, which would allow you to calculate the activation energy and the energy barrier for any changes in the material. Um, not some vapor pressure is for uh, vapor pressure measurements of solids and uh, other important macros amorphous content determination uh, for pharma or food industry, permeability measurements, uh, which we will have some more examples of later on. And also uh, more macros here, isotherm analysis, some more equations for uh, for inorganic uh, porous materials, microporous, mesoporous materials, and also Young and Nelson uh, equation, which would allow you to deconvolute the isotherms and uh, basically calculate how much monolayer, how much multilayer, uh, uh, and there is a present, and also uh, the degree of interaction between the probe molecules and the surface of the material. Moving on to some, some examples, uh, um, if you wanted to do some diffusion measurements on thin films, the most uh, basic and simplest way would be just to hang the uh, uh, section of the film from the hang down wire in the sample chamber, and that way both sides of the film, uh, both sides are exposed to the vapor, and, uh, but it's the easiest and simplest way to measure diffusion. Uh, diffusion coefficient and um, uh, as you can see from the example here uh, as you increase the relative humidity the co uh, diffusion coefficient increases as well. The next option would be for example in the case of packaging material uh, this is a blister packaging uh, for tablets uh, you can just hang the entire uh, please believe the packaging material with the tablet inside and uh, uh, determine the diffusion of uh, uh, diffusion rate of moisture uh, through the packaging material which is then absorbed by the uh, by the tablet but um, a better way and a more sophisticated way of measuring diffusion and permeability would be through an accessory called the uh, pain cell, which is basically a small cup with a top on, and the film is uh, it can be sandwiched between the two sections of the cell, and then basically the whole cell is placed into the sample pan and at different humidities one side of the film obviously is exposed to the relative humidity or vapor concentrations. There are different configurations that you can use this cell. One is that you can put some moisture getting materials like zeolites in the cup and encourage moisture from outside to be absorbed by the zeolite through the film. Or you can just simply put some water in the cup and uh, allow water to escape through the film, the outside, and measure the mass loss. So these two combinations, depending on uh, the nature of your material and how you like to see the moisture uptake or desorption, uh, you can either have moisture gather material in the cup and cover it with the film and see how moisture is absorbed by the zeolite or water in the cup and see how quickly water escapes through the film. Here, just an example to show you the difference that it makes by having zeolite or not having zeolite in the cup. The blue line shows uh, a film material uh, at different concentrations of mo uh, moisture uh, without zeolite in the cup. Uh, and the red line shows uh, the, uh, the, the same film in the presence of zeolite in the cup, which basically shows a, a more uptake, which is due to the zeolite pellets. Here's another example to two different uh, types of films. One is thicker than uh, the other and as you can see here the uh, diffusion rate for the thinner sample, thinner membrane is much faster uh, and uh, greater for than the thicker film uh, and we can 
the software can then calculate the diffusion rate and uh, permeability or uh, water vapor flux. And uh, as you can see here, uh, the um, polyurethane membrane um, shows a much uh, faster diffusion rate. Here's another uh, experiment where you have two uh, vapor being generated, moisture, uh, water, and methanol. Methanol could represent any organic vapor really, could be a flavor molecule escaping through packaging material, um, uh, or in the case of, um, depending on the nature of the material you're dealing with, any uh, solvent coming off solvates. So basically, we um, use the uh, Captain film just uh, for, for this experiment, uh, uh, just uh, plain film, um, and by uh, having zeolite inside the cup, encourage moisture to go through the film um, and encourage the organic vapor as well. Uh, so to begin with, we applied only um, uh, methanol and then only water uh, and then followed by water and methanol. So basically water provided a background humidity and we studied the uh, absorption of uh, methanol molecules. To investigate the absorption process more, we repeated the experiment at a higher temperature as well, so 25 degrees and 45 degrees here. And to begin with, methanol diffusion for 50% pure P0 at 0% relative humidity. You don't see any differences at the two different temperatures, so the diffusion is the same. But as you move on to water, at 20% uh, relative humidity in the absence of methanol, you'll see that higher, higher temperatures encourages molecular mobility and uh, the diffusion for water at higher temperature is greater. However, when you have both methanol and water present, uh, it, the temperature makes the, the biggest difference. And you can see here, 50% partial pressure, uh, P over P0, and 20% relative humidity, uh, there is a greater diffusion rate for, uh, for the methanol absorption. In another experiment, um, we used the Captain film as a support for, um, for some bitumen sample. Uh, generally, moisture diffusion in mineral bitumen systems is the main cause for degradation. Uh, that adhesive bond between the aggregate and bitumen will change, which results in the separation of the aggregates from the asphalt mixture. So it's important to measure the permeability rate of moisture and adhesion properties of mineral and bitumen. Uh, so to test the thin layer of bitumen, we would need a support. As without the support, bitumen will deform with time, especially at high temperatures. So Captain Film, after trying different uh, films, uh, Captain Film uh, proved to be the best, the most stable one. So bitumen films were prepared by film casting using toluene as a solvent. So a thin layer of bitumen uh, was placed on, on the support, the Captain film. And then we solution coated about 170 micron of bitumen on a 70 micron Captain film, uh, which were then sealed into a paint cell. Uh, zeolite again was used in the paint cell and we then ramped up the humidity to 20% and then uh, to 40% RH. Uh, after 720 minutes at this stage, the zeolite was fully saturated and uh, basically any more data after that wasn't really of any use. So we stopped here at 40%. The permeability rates for 20% and 40% RH look good. Uh, they are in good agreement with literature data 
and it shows that basically the permeability rate doubles as you double the relative humidity concentration. I must say that this experiment only measures diffusion and permeability constants for bitumen film and the uptake is for zeolite. So this, this uptake, there's no way is for the bitumen or for the film. It's so high that it's just for the, the amount of water that goes into the zeolite. So basically the mass data at the end of each step is used to calculate diffusion rate. So then at equilibrium conditions at around 720 minutes, considering the thickness of the film, we were then able to calculate the diffusion coefficient, um, which is again uh, in agreement with the literature data for, for, the, for the bitumen sample. Moving on to a, something a little bit different, on, still on the bitumen and asphalt materials, but considering that physical and chemical properties of minerals and bitumen also affect the affinity between bitumen and aggregate, we can investigate these properties using DVS. These properties include uh, surface energy, surface chemistry, surface area, and we can use DVS to measure all these properties. Of course, these properties can be used to select combination of bitumen and aggregates that are more resistant to moisture damage, and also to select additives that can be used to improve the performance of asphalt mixtures based on the physical chemical nature of the bitumen and aggregate. Also using these properties, we can predict the resistance of the mixture to moisture induced damage. To measure the surface energy, we would need to measure isotherms uh, for an alkane like octane here and two polar probe molecules like ethyl acetate and chloroform, which have different acid base, Lewis acid base properties, electron donor, electron accepted properties. Here the isotherms show a small uptake due to surface absorption only. And again, type two isotherms indicate uh, monolayer formation here, which are ideal for the kind of calculations we want to do. Then use the analysis software to calculate the surface energy and work of adhesion uh, for, the, for the sample. So how do we predict the interaction between the aggregate and the bitumen? The adhesive strength depends really on the properties of the mineral and the bitumen, which is related to the asphalt quality. And this can be considered as work of adhesion. And we can measure work of adhesion through measuring the surface energy. Surface modifications can affect the work of adhesion. For example, uh, greater surface roughness of minerals will increase work of adhesion and increase mechanical strength. Uh, whereas impurities or different additives uh, can affect the work of adhesion too, and can, for example, acid base properties of minerals may affect work of adhesion and decrease uh, mechanical strength. So to do the experiment, we want to measure dispersive and polar surface energies for the minerals and measure dispersive and polar surface energies for the bitumen. So that involves basically doing the absorption measurement for an alkane molecule and two polar molecules on each sample and calculate work of adhesion using surface energy values of minerals and the bitumen. And then we can compare work of adhesion with work of cohesion values. High work of adhesion, of course, means a stronger mineral bitumen bonding strength and higher work of cohesion means mineral interactions or a bitumen, bitumen interaction. So basically clumping effects. So the ultimate goal is to predict mineral bitumen interactions without any mechanical tests. So here are the results for a series of uh, minerals, aggregates, dispersive surface energy shows that uh, quartz sand and uh, calcite sand have relatively higher surface energy and calcite sand is, is the highest surface energy. So would probably give the best interaction with bitumen and uh, quartz pure and pot felt spares. Similarly, uh, sort of uh, low tractions is expected from these two. And then looking at the 
uh, acid-base properties of these materials. Uh, we did a series of uh, probe molecules, dichromethane, ethyl acetate, uh, butanol, and toluene, each one representing an acid and a base probe molecules, which would be targeting the acid-base sites on the surface of the material. In conclusion, DVS is a very versatile tool for studying the moisture absorption behavior of a wide range of materials. It can be used to measure work of adhesion, work of cohesion, which would give us information about the interaction between two different bodies like bitumen and aggregate. So the affinity between the bitumen and aggregate can be calculated. DVS paint cell can be used to measure diffusion rate and permeability of moisture for bitumen. And uh, also DVS can be coupled with different microscopic and spectroscopic techniques like we can have video camera and also uh, ROM and UV probes attached to the system. And it's a very sensitive characterization tool which can be used for a wide range of materials to study batch-to-batch -batch variation and processing problems. It can also be used to measure vapor pressure and porosity in, in organic uh, solids, heat absorption, gas absorption, uh, CO2, H2S, SO2 absorption, uh, and also, of course, co-adsorption and vacuum drying as well. Thank you very much for listening, and I'd like to thank uh, all my colleagues at, uh, at Surface Measurement Systems, and also uh, especially would like to thank uh, our collaborators and uh, Dr. Katerina Varveri and her team at Delft University for uh, lending us the bitumen samples. Thank you very much. Thank you.